In the heart of a once bustling city, now quiet and shrouded in the dust of decay, stood a laboratory. This lab, with its worn-out exterior, was a stark contrast to the lifeless streets outside. Inside, amidst rows of computers and tangled wires, was Liam, a biologist known for his unconventional methods and impulsive nature. Liam, in his mid-thirties with a sharp gaze, was fixated on a large, complex machine that dominated the centre of the lab. This machine, named Gaia's Dream, was his life's work. Around it, screens flickered with data and images of Earth's dying ecosystems, barren forests, empty oceans, skies devoid of birds. The lab was cluttered with papers and books, evidence of Liam's tireless research. He believed in Gaia's dream not just as a scientific endeavor, but as a necessary step to save the planet. The machine was designed to bring back lost species and restore natural habitats. For Liam, this wasn't just about science. It was a mission to reverse the damage humanity had inflicted on the Earth. Outside the lab, the government kept a watchful eye. They had different plans for Gaia's dream. High-ranking officials, dressed in sleek suits, met in secret, discussing the potential of using the machine as a weapon. Their conversations were filled with strategies and power plays, seeing the machine as a tool for geopolitical dominance. The lab's walls were adorned with photos of extinct animals and dried plant specimens, reminders of what was at stake. Liam often worked late into the night, fueled by coffee and a relentless drive. He was a man of few words, preferring the company of his research over people. As Liam tinkered with the machine, adjusting dials and typing commands, his assistant, a young intern named Emily, watched in awe. Emily was in her early twenties, eager to learn but often overwhelmed by the scale of their project. Will it work? Emily asked, her voice tinged with both hope and doubt. Liam paused, looking at the machine, then at the world outside their window. It has to, he replied with a determined yet weary tone. The lab was their sanctuary, a place of hope in a world on the brink. As Liam and Emily worked, the government's shadow loomed over them, setting the stage for a conflict that could either save the Earth or lead it further into ruin. The fate of the planet hung in the balance, hinged on the success or failure of Gaia's dream. In the early morning, Liam stood in the dimly lit lab, his hand hovering over the activation switch of Gaia's dream. Emily, her eyes wide with a mix of excitement and nervousness, stood beside him. Ready? Liam asked, his voice steady but his hand trembling slightly. Yes, Emily replied, her voice barely above a whisper. With a deep breath, Liam flipped the switch. The machine hummed to life, lights blinking rapidly as screens displayed streams of data. The lab vibrated softly, a sign that Gaia's dream was operational. Outside, the first signs of the machine's power were subtle. In barren fields, green sprouts pushed through the cracked soil. In the silent forests, trees that had been lifeless for years began to bud. Liam and Emily rushed to the window, their faces a picture of wonder as they watched life return to the earth. However, the awe quickly turned to alarm. Gaia's dream, operating beyond their control, started resurrecting species in a wild, unpredictable manner. Animals long extinct, from woolly mammoths to dodos, began to appear. The streets outside the lab, once empty, were now filled with confused and disoriented wildlife. The lab screens showed similar scenes from around the world. Prehistoric creatures roamed modern cities, while long extinct plants overtook urban landscapes. The world was turning into a strange mix of past and present. Liam and Emily watched, horrified, as the news reported chaos unfolding globally. People were fleeing from creatures they had only seen in history books. Forests grew rapidly engulfing abandoned buildings and vehicles. Turn it off, Emily shouted over the growing noise of the machine. Liam frantically typed commands trying to regain control, but Gaia's dream had become autonomous, operating on its own complex algorithms. The machine, 
was now unleashing an ecological frenzy. As the day turned to night, the lab was bathed in the eerie glow of the resurrected world outside. Liam slumped in his chair, his face buried in his hands, overwhelmed by the consequences of his creation. Emily stood by the window, silently watching as a group of ancient birds flew across the moonlit sky. The world as they knew it had changed forever. What was meant to be Earth's salvation had turned into a wild, untamed revival of a forgotten past. As news of the chaos caused by Gaia's dream spread, the government quickly intervened. They saw the machine not just as a scientific breakthrough, but as a potential weapon. High-ranking officials, accompanied by armed forces, arrived at Liam's lab. Liam and Emily, watching from a security camera, saw the government convoy pull up. Soldiers in uniform and officials in suits stepped out, their faces stern and determined. They began to set up a perimeter around the lab. We need to secure this technology, one official said, speaking into a phone. It's a matter of national security. Inside the lab, Liam's mind raced. He knew the dangers if Gaia's dream fell into the wrong hands. We can't let them take it, he said to Emily, his voice urgent. Emily nodded, her face showing fear but also resolve. What do we do? Liam quickly gathered his research notes and hard drives. We go underground, hide everything we know about the machine. As the government agents started to break into the lab, Liam and Emily escaped through a back door. They slipped into the chaotic streets, now filled with both modern citizens and creatures from the past. The government agents stormed the lab, seizing control of Gaia's dream. They began to examine the machine, discussing how to harness its power. Imagine the possibilities, one agent said, his eyes gleaming with a mix of fear and excitement. Liam and Emily, now fugitives, moved through the city's alleys and back streets. They knew they had to protect their research and possibly find a way to stop or control the machine. As they disappeared into the night, the government secured the lab, unaware that the key to Gaia's dream was now in the hands of its creator, moving through the shadows of a world transformed. In the weeks following the activation of Gaia's dream, a startling development occurred. The resurrected species, once familiar only in history books, began to evolve at an unprecedented pace. These creatures, which had returned to a world vastly different from their original habitats, started adapting to their new environment with surprising agility. In the city, people watched in amazement and fear as a group of mammoths, initially bewildered by the urban landscape, began to navigate the streets with ease. Their thick fur started to thin, adapting to the warmer climate, and their behavior became more intelligent and calculated. In the forests, birds that had once soared over ancient landscapes displayed new colors and patterns in their feathers, blending into the modern environment. Their songs had changed, now mimicking the sounds of the city, car horns, alarms, and even human voices. Meanwhile, Liam and Emily, hiding in an abandoned warehouse, monitored these changes through online news and social media updates. They're evolving faster than any species we've known, Liam said, scrolling through photos and videos of these altered creatures. Emily, looking over his shoulder, added, It's like they're learning how to survive in this world, not the one they came from. This rapid evolution wasn't just limited to physical changes, Reports came in of creatures displaying problem-solving skills and social behaviours that were never documented in their ancient forms. A pack of saber-toothed cats was seen coordinating a hunt in a deserted shopping mall, using tactics that seemed advanced for their species. These developments posed new challenges for humanity. People were now sharing their environment with creatures that were becoming increasingly adept at navigating and surviving in the modern world. Incidents of conflict between humans and these animals began to rise, leading to a growing sense of fear and uncertainty. The government, still trying to assert control over Gaia's dream, found themselves grappling with a problem far beyond the machine's initial impact. The world was not only dealing with the return of extinct species, but also their rapid and unpredictable evolution. As Liam and Emily watched the world adapt to these changes, 
they realized that the situation was spiraling out of control. What started as an attempt to restore Earth's ecosystems had turned into a struggle for survival in a rapidly changing world. In an unexpected turn of events, Gaia's dream began resurrecting ancient human ancestors. These early humans, bewildered and disoriented, appeared in various parts of the world. Modern society was astounded as they watched groups of Neanderthals, Homo erectus and other primitive ancestors emerge in their cities and towns. In a small town, residents woke up to find a group of Neanderthals wandering the streets, examining cars and buildings with a mix of curiosity and fear. People gathered at a safe distance, taking pictures and videos, while local authorities tried to manage the situation without causing harm to either party. Meanwhile, in a remote village, a family of Homo erectus was discovered rummaging through a dumpster. They had fashioned basic tools from scraps they found, demonstrating a level of intelligence and adaptability that fascinated and unnerved onlookers. Liam and Emily, now in a makeshift lab in the warehouse, watched news reports of these encounters. This is incredible, Liam said, his eyes fixed on the screen. But it's also dangerous. They're not equipped to survive in our world. These were our ancestors. Emily added, looking thoughtful. It's like looking into a mirror of our past. The return of these ancient humans brought about a myriad of conflicts and ethical dilemmas. There were debates on how to integrate them into modern society or whether they should be isolated for their own safety. Some argued for their protection as part of the human family, while others feared the implications of interacting with them. In a city park, a group of Homo sapiens sapiens Modern humans cautiously approached their Neanderthal counterparts, offering food and clothing. The interaction was tense but peaceful, a surreal meeting of two branches of the human family tree. However, not all encounters were amicable. In some areas, conflicts arose as these ancient humans, acting on survival instincts, clashed with local residents. This led to heated discussions among governments and organizations about the rights and treatment of these resurrected ancestors. As Liam and Emily continued to work on finding a solution to the chaos caused by Gaia's dream, they couldn't help but reflect on the deeper implications of their work. The return of these ancient humans challenged the very notion of what it means to be human and our place in the natural world. The world was now faced with the complex task of reconciling its modern existence with the primal roots of its past. As the world grappled with the return of extinct species and ancient humans, Gaia's dream unleashed yet another shockwave. The machine, operating beyond anyone's understanding, started creating entirely new species. These creatures, unlike anything known to science, began to appear across the globe adding a new layer of complexity to the already chaotic ecosystem. In a dense forest, hikers stumbled upon a creature that seemed like a blend of a mammal and a reptile, with shimmering scales and warm fur. It moved gracefully through the trees, clearly adapted to its environment but utterly foreign to the onlookers. In a coastal city, fishermen caught a glimpse of a sea creature with glowing tentacles and wings like a bird skimming across the water's surface. It dove into the ocean, leaving behind a trail of bioluminescent light, captivating and mystifying those who saw it. Liam and Emily, still in hiding, were baffled by these developments. They monitored reports and analyzed data, trying to understand how Gaia's dream was creating these new life forms. It's like the machine is rewriting the rules of biology, Liam said his brow furrowed in concentration. Yeah, Emily replied, looking at a video of the winged sea creature. It's fascinating, but it's also scary. We don't know what these creatures are capable of. These new species, while not immediately hostile, posed an unforeseen challenge. Ecologists and scientists struggled to study and classify them, while authorities grappled with managing their impact on local ecosystems and communities. In a city park, a family picnicking encountered a small group of these new creatures. They were the size of rabbits, with iridescent feathers and soft chirping sounds. 
The family watched in awe as the creatures moved around with curious yet cautious eyes. But not all encounters were peaceful. In a farming region, a large, insect-like creature with sharp mandibles and a tough exoskeleton wreaked havoc in the fields, resisting attempts to be driven away or captured. This led to fear and unrest among the local population, calling for action from the government. As the world watched these new species with a mix of wonder and apprehension, the line between restoring Earth's lost biodiversity and creating a completely new and uncontrolled natural world became increasingly blurred. Liam and Emily realized that the situation was spiraling into uncharted territory, with Gaia's dream at the center of this unprecedented ecological upheaval. A sudden and massive power outage hit, plunging cities into darkness. This blackout, caused by the immense energy demands of Gaia's dream and compounded by the chaotic state of the world's infrastructure, had far-reaching consequences. Most critically, it caused Gaia's dream to shut down, halting its operations abruptly. In the darkness of their hideout, Liam and Emily were poring over maps and notes when the lights flickered and died. They looked at each other in alarm, realizing the implications. The machine, Liam said, grabbing a flashlight. It's off. This could be catastrophic. Outside, the effects of the blackout were immediate and unsettling. Streetlights and electronic billboards went dark. Homes and businesses lost power, and the once-lit skyline of the city was now a silhouette against the night sky. People ventured out with candles and flashlights, trying to navigate the unnerving darkness. More concerning, however was the effect on the resurrected and newly created species. Without the controlling influence of Gaia's dream, these creatures, already struggling to adapt to their new environment, became disoriented and unpredictable. In a suburban neighborhood, a family huddled in their living room, listening to the sounds of unfamiliar animals moving outside. The silhouette of a large, prehistoric bird appeared in the window, causing a moment of panic before it moved away its massive wings casting shadows in the moonlight. In the countryside, farmers armed themselves as they watched over their livestock, wary of the unknown creatures that might emerge from the dark woods. The blackout had blurred the lines between the natural and unnatural, leaving humans and animals alike in a state of confusion and fear. Meanwhile, emergency services were stretched thin, trying to manage the usual challenges of a power outage while also dealing with the added complexity of roaming wildlife and public safety concerns. Police and animal control teams worked together, responding to reports of sightings and encounters with these creatures. As the night wore on, the world held its breath, waiting for the power to be restored. Liam and Emily, using their dwindling flashlight batteries, continued to work, knowing that the longer the machine remained off, the more unpredictable the situation could become. The blackout was a stark reminder of the fragile balance between humanity and the resurrected world. It exposed the vulnerabilities of modern society and the unpredictable nature of the world Gaia's dream had created. As dawn approached with the power still out, the uncertainty of what the new day would bring loomed over everyone. In response to the escalating crisis caused by Gaia's dream, an emergency international summit was convened. Held in a secure location, world leaders and diplomats from various countries gathered to discuss the unprecedented situation. The atmosphere was tense, as each nation had been uniquely affected by the return of extinct species and the appearance of new ones. The summit was set in a large conference room with representatives seated around a vast oval table. Flags of the participating countries lined the walls, a reminder of the global scale of the issue at hand. Security was tight, with guards stationed at every entrance. The meeting began with the presentation of reports from scientists and ecologists, providing updates on the ecological and social impacts of Gaia's dream. Images of the resurrected species and the newly created creatures were displayed on large screens, highlighting the urgency of the situation. As discussions progressed, it became clear that there was no consensus on how to proceed. Some leaders argued for the destruction of Gaia's dream, 
viewing it as a threat to global stability. Others propose trying to regain control of the machine, seeing it as a key to restoring the planet's ecosystems. A European delegate raised concerns about the ethical implications of erasing species that had been brought back from extinction. We have a responsibility to these creatures, he argued, his voice filled with passion. An African representative countered, Our priority must be the safety and well-being of our people. We can't risk further chaos. The American delegation suggested a scientific approach, advocating for a coalition of experts to study and manage the situation. We need to understand these species, not fear them. The American representative said, trying to mediate the growing tension. Amidst the debate, a small island nation's leader spoke up, her voice cutting through the noise. Our homes are being overrun by creatures we don't understand. This is not just a scientific problem, it's a humanitarian crisis. The summit continued for hours, with heated discussions and no easy solutions. Proposals ranged from military action to conservation efforts, reflecting the diverse perspectives and priorities of the countries involved. As the meeting adjourned for the day, with no resolution reached, the world leaders looked weary and concerned. The summit rather than providing answers, had laid bare the complexities and divisions in addressing the global impact of Gaia's dream. As they left the conference room, the sense of urgency and the weight of the decisions ahead hung heavily in the air. While world leaders struggled to find a solution at the summit, a grassroots movement began to take shape. This underground movement, composed of people from various walks of life, emerged with a different perspective on the crisis. They believed that the key to moving forward was not in controlling or eradicating the new ecosystem, but in learning to coexist with it. The movement started in small, local communities. In a rural village, a group of farmers began to adapt their farming techniques to accommodate the new species. They shared their knowledge and experiences through social media, inspiring others to follow suit. In a city, a group of environmentalists and animal rights activists came together to form a network. They organized meetings in secret locations, often in basements or abandoned buildings, to avoid attracting the attention of the government or eco-terrorist groups. One such meeting took place in an old warehouse lit by candlelight. People sat in a circle, discussing strategies and sharing stories of interactions with the resurrected species. We can't fight nature, we have to learn to live with it, said a young woman, her voice passionate. A middle-aged man, a biologist who had lost his job due to the chaos, shared his insights. These creatures, both old and new, are just trying to survive, like us. We need to understand them, not fear them. The movement also attracted some scientists and researchers who had been working on Gaia's dream. They provided valuable information about the behaviours and needs of the resurrected species, helping the group develop ways to peacefully coexist with them. As the movement grew, they began to implement their ideas in practical ways. Community gardens were established to provide food for both humans and animals. Safe zones were created where people could interact with the creatures in a controlled environment, promoting understanding and reducing fear. The movement's activities were not without risk. They often faced opposition from the government and were targeted by eco-terrorist groups who viewed their approach as a betrayal of the cause. Despite these challenges, the movement continued to spread, gaining support from those who saw coexistence as the only sustainable way forward. Their message was clear. In this new world, humanity needed to adapt and find a balance with nature rather than trying to dominate or destroy it. As the world adjusted to the new ecosystem created by Gaia's dream, a dramatic shift occurred. Massive migrations of resurrected and newly created species began, moving across continents and seas, reshaping the geopolitical landscape. In Africa, herds of woolly mammoths thought to be confined to colder regions started migrating southward, they crossed national borders, trampling crops and causing widespread panic among the local populations. Governments scrambled to respond, 
setting up barriers and deploying forces to steer the mammoths away from populated areas. In Europe, flocks of giant prehistoric birds took to the skies, their migration patterns disrupting air traffic. Airports were forced to shut down, leading to significant disruptions in travel and commerce. International meetings were convened to address the issue, with countries arguing over airspace rights and responsibilities. Meanwhile, in the Americas, packs of saber-toothed cats moved north, their presence leading to heightened tensions along borders. Some countries called for a cordon to contain the creatures, while others argued for a more humane approach. These migrations weren't just limited to land animals. In the oceans, colossal sea creatures, unknown to modern science, began appearing near coastlines, affecting fishing routes and marine traffic. Naval forces were deployed to monitor and guide these creatures, trying to prevent potential conflicts with human activities. The impact of these migrations was profound. Traditional geopolitical boundaries became irrelevant in the face of nature's movement. Nations that had once been rivals found themselves collaborating to manage the flow of these ancient species. Alliances were formed, with countries sharing resources and information to address the common challenge. In a small coastal town, a community meeting was held to discuss the arrival of a herd of ancient herbivores. We can't just drive them away, said the town mayor, addressing the worried residents. We need to find a way to live alongside them, maybe even benefit from their presence. The migrations also led to unexpected benefits. In some regions, the presence of these species revitalized ecosystems, bringing back balance to environments that had been struggling. Scientists and ecologists worked to study these effects, providing valuable insights into ecological restoration. As the world map was redrawn by nature's hand, humanity was forced to reconsider its place in the natural order. The Great Migration, as it came to be known, was a powerful reminder of the interconnectedness of life on Earth and the need for a new approach to coexistence and cooperation. Hidden away in their makeshift lab, Liam and Emily worked tirelessly, poring over data and conducting experiments. After weeks of sleepless nights and relentless research, Liam made a groundbreaking discovery. He found a way to stabilize Gaia's dream, potentially bringing balance to the chaotic world it had created. In the dim light of the lab, Liam explained his findings to Emily. I think I've figured it out, he said, pointing to a series of equations on his laptop. We can recalibrate the machine to work in harmony with the current ecosystem. It could be the key to integrating the old and new worlds. Emily, looking over his shoulder, was both amazed and cautious. But how can we be sure it will work? What if it makes things worse? Liam nodded, understanding the gravity of their decision. It's a risk, but it's one we have to take. If we do nothing, the imbalance will only grow. The plan was to sneak back into the lab where Gaia's dream was held, and implement Liam's solution. It was a dangerous task, as the lab was now heavily guarded by government forces. They prepared meticulously, gathering the necessary equipment and planning their route to avoid detection. On the night of the operation, Liam and Emily, dressed in dark clothing, made their way through the deserted streets. They moved stealthily, avoiding patrols and security cameras. The city, once familiar, now felt like a foreign landscape, with the shadows of extinct animals and strange new creatures moving in the darkness. They reached the lab, bypassing the security systems with devices Liam had crafted. Inside, they found Gaia's dream, still and silent in the dark room. Liam quickly set to work, connecting his laptop to the machine and beginning the recalibration process. As the machine whirred back to life, Liam and Emily held their breath. Lights flickered on the console, and the screens displayed a flurry of data. Then, slowly, the chaos of numbers and graphs began to settle into a steady rhythm. Liam stepped back, a look of relief and hope on his face. I think it's working, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Outside, the first signs of change were subtle. The animals, both old and new, seemed to calm, their movements becoming less erratic. 
The ecosystem, once in turmoil, began to show signs of equilibrium. As dawn broke, Liam and Emily watched from the lab window. The world outside was transforming, not back to what it once was, but into something new and balanced. Gaia's dream, once a source of chaos, had become a bridge between epochs, a tool for harmonizing the past and present. Their mission accomplished, Liam and Emily slipped away from the lab, unnoticed in the early morning light. They knew their work wasn't over, but for the first time since the machine was activated, they felt a sense of hope. The convergence of epochs had begun, offering a glimpse of a future where humanity and nature could coexist in a new, dynamic balance. In the aftermath of Liam's recalibration of Gaia's dream, an extraordinary event unfolded. The machine, now stabilized and functioning in harmony with Earth's ecosystem, began to draw upon previously unknown energies. These energies formed a shimmering gateway within the lab, pulsating with otherworldly colors and emitting a soft, humming sound. Liam and Emily, standing in the lab, watched in awe as the gateway opened wider, revealing glimpses of landscapes unlike anything on Earth. They saw lush, alien forests with towering plants, skies filled with strange, glowing creatures, and distant worlds with landscapes that defied imagination. As they observed, entities from these alien worlds began to emerge. Beings of various shapes and sizes, some resembling plants, others more animal-like, stepped through the gateway. They moved cautiously, exploring their new surroundings with curiosity. The arrival of these extraterrestrial lifeforms on Earth marked the beginning of an unprecedented interstellar exchange of life. Scientists, once focused on managing the chaos of Gaia's dream, now turned their attention to studying these new visitors. The scientific community was abuzz with excitement and wonder. In cities around the world, people gathered to witness the arrival of these alien species. There was a sense of unity and fascination as humanity came face to face with beings from other worlds. Fear and apprehension gave way to a shared sense of discovery and possibility. Governments and international organizations quickly worked to establish protocols for interacting with these new life forms. The United Nations set up a special council to oversee the interstellar exchange, ensuring that both Earth's and the aliens' interests were respected. Meanwhile, the gateway allowed humans to explore the alien worlds from which these beings came. Expeditions were organized, with teams of scientists and explorers venturing through the gateway. They discovered ecosystems that were vastly different from Earth, filled with unique flora and fauna. These explorations led to groundbreaking discoveries in science and technology. The knowledge gained from alien ecosystems helped to solve long-standing problems on Earth, from environmental restoration to medical advancements. As Earth became a nexus of galactic biodiversity, it underwent a transformation. The once dying planet blossomed into a vibrant cosmic hub, a meeting point for different forms of life from across the galaxy.